webinar here, How to Trade Range-Bound Income Trades in a Volatile Market. Uh, we're happy to present various educational presentations, topics on whether if it's different strategies, different market views, commentaries, or, or just even educational features on our platform. So we try to provide a, a wide array of different topics for you guys to take a look at. Uh, we offer a bunch of different trading platforms, so we like to show them off and, and just show various ways to, to go at, and use them and, and the best way to utilize. My name is Rob Lifson. I'm one of the VPs of Business Development and uh, Sales here at Lightspeed. Uh, today we have Dan Sheridan, uh, who's going to be presenting. Um, I'm just going to do our quick disclosure here before we get started, and then uh, we'll have the, the main presentation underway. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Nothing presented today should be construed as an investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any security or contract. Since we don't know everyone's investment objectives or risk tolerance, we're not endorsing any specific trading strategies. Security derivative and futures trading involves a substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Each investor must consider whether this is a suitable investment since you may lose all or more than your initial investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Lightspeed is a division of Lion Brokerage LLC. See, Lime Broker LLC is not affiliated with these third market, third party market commentator, educators, and service providers, data, information, and material content are provided for informational and educational purposes only. This content neither oh, is nor no. should be construed as an offer, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities contracts, any investment decision. Okay. For the users. Such content is solely based on users and analysis, taking into consideration your financial circumstances, investment objectives, and risk tolerance. Line broker jealousy does not endorse or recommend any of the commentators educational and uh, it's based independent analysis. Thank you for that. Um, now, just uh, for more information on a demo of the trading platform or open an account with Lightspeed, uh, please feel free to contact me, uh, Rob Lifson, uh, rlifson at linebrokerage.com. Uh, you can also, if you have questions for Dan or want more information, certainly send them our way. We'd be happy to pass them on as well. So uh, we're happy to have Dan Sheridan present here today. Uh, Dan is the founder and CEO of Sheridan Options mentoring. He's over 25 years of options trading experience and educating traders worldwide. Dan is a veteran CBOE market maker or a highly successful specialist firm for trading, headed up by John and Pete Jarian. Um, Dan left the pits and founded Sheridan Mentoring. He now teaches individual traders the techniques and methods he uses every day to consistently profit in option markets. He's hosted weekly CBOE TV show, Option Safari at CBOE.com, and does uh, educational webinars for CBOE at many brokers, as well as his new TV show called Sheridan TV on SheridanTV.com. So we're very happy to have Dan, uh, extremely knowledgeable and in, uh, industry uh, vet here. Um, we've had him do previous webinars in the past have always been very well received and uh, people uh, really love the information. So we're, we're very excited here. So we're going to get started. I'm going to bring up the slideshow and I'm going to hand the mic over to Dan. Dan, I hope you're ready to go. We're, we're ready to have you. We're, we're excited. So I'm going to bring up the slideshow here now and uh, everyone should be able to see that. Okay, here we go. Dan, are you ready All to go? All right. Yes, I am ready. Thank you, Rob. Great. And let's, let's make sure. Hey, Rob, can we? Do I just need the arrow to go forward on the slides, or make sure they're working? Uh, well, right now I Thank have you. the control. If you want me to shift the presentation to you, you'd be able to run your own slideshow. Oh, you just you want me to tell, just tell me to, you? to move forward? Yeah, just just yeah, I'll just tell you when to move forward. This is just a few slides. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks, Rob, and excited to talk today about how to trade range-bound income trades in a volatile market. We'll cover a couple strategies, and uh, this should be very interactive. So if you if you type in questions as I get a break in the action, I will answer them. And the structure for today is I will go over a few strategies, kind of explain them, explain how I look at the world and option strategies, and then Rob will join us and we'll look at a couple of these uh, actual trades uh, on the brokerage platform uh, about halfway through the webinar. We'll go look for a few examples of these trades. Uh, so uh, yeah, glad to get uh, 
Glad to be here with you today. How to trade range-bound income trades in a volatile market. And uh, Rob, go ahead, go to the, the next slide. That would be great. All right, today this is for educational purposes. Um, I will not read every word of this, but this is for educational purposes to, for today. And this is not a recommendation or anything. All right, we could go to the next slide. Oh, I'll just mention this real quick as we're going through this. Um, I'm going to be talking about one of the strategies today. We'll be talking about calendars, another one, iron condors, range bound trades. Um, and we'll just throw this out there right off the bat. If you're interested and you'll get in the calendars that I'll be talking about, we started this master series in shared and mentoring and uh, master series is just, we're focusing on some strategies that we've been doing for years uh, in live trading our community and want to teach those to you in an intense three week uh, time frame. So if you go to the homepage of shared and mentoring and you click, you'll see that banner there. Uh, it's a three week class. There'll be two classes a week. They're all recorded sessions, but you can watch it live. If you click on that, uh, the, the class starts next Tuesday. And if you click on that up until Monday evening, you could save $50. So it's $297 normally. It would be $247 uh, if you just put in the promo code LIME for LIME Brokerage. If you put in, just type, go to the banner, click in L-I-M-E, you'll be in, and you can get information on that. So uh, that class starts Tuesday. All right, Rob, yeah, you go to the next slide. And these are some of the things we'll talk a little bit today. We talked about the master's class coming up. Range-bound trades and duration, a little bit of philosophy and plan for range-bound trades, criteria for trading range-bound spreads, uh, risk management a little bit, and then trade searching with Rob. So this is, that's kind of what we're going to cover today. Uh, the trade searching with Rob will be the second half of the uh, webinar. Rob, go ahead, one more slide. Uh, so range bound trades, at least that we'll cover today, will be calendars and iron condors. Um, again, just so you can see, I'll just give you for those who haven't heard me before, just want to give real quick my 30,000 feet up in the airplane plane perspective on uh, running an options portfolio using option strategies. Uh, one bucket will be the long portfolio. Long portfolio is more the view of an investor, uh, which is kind of neutral to bullish over time, isn't it? Uh, an investor or, or a stock owner, when you buy stock, you're buying it. Hey, I like this stock over time, and you invest in the stock. So the long portfolio would be strategies like uh, covered right, cash secured put, put credit spread, long diagonal, which is just substituting and maybe a further out in the money call versus stock in a covered right. Um, long stock, uh, basically any strategy that does much better on the upside than the downside, that would be long portfolio. And you know, I always recommend having an allocation of your capital towards uh, those type of spreads, which have done phenomenal since Christmas Eve, right? Since Christmas Eve, we've had one of the biggest three, four month periods in the history of the universe. Since Rob and I were small children, uh, we've gone up uh, in the SPX alone, we've gone from 2350 to 2900, which is 550 points uh, in the SPX in four months. Oh my goodness. So, so it's been wonderful for long portfolio strategies. If any of you've had covered rights or put credit spreads on, you've been very excited. The next bucket uh, where I would allocate capital, and my allocations depend on where the volatility is, where's the market levels, but speculative strategies would be Rob or I wake up in the morning and we say, you know what, I have an opinion, right? And either based on technicals, based on fundamentals, based on late night pizza, based on somebody said something on TV, whatever it is, I have an opinion where Apple or some stock is going in the next days or weeks for a trade. And that would be in the spec part of the portfolio versus 
you know, uh, and, and maybe playing betting on, you know, Netflix earnings just came out. You could have bet was it was going up or going down. So the speculative is more a bet on direction and, you know, you might buy puts, you might buy calls, different strategies, but it's speculative based on I have an opinion. And then the third part of the portfolio, we call it income trades, even though they're all technically income trades, but that's where range bound trades would fall in. These are probability based or time decay based trades uh, that you make money when they're in a range. So these are repeatable trades that one can put on more neutral. I'm not betting on a particular direction and I'm banking on time decay and probabilities and good risk management to make my money. So you have three buckets, long portfolio, your neutral to bullish stuff, uh, investor type approach, your income, range bound trades, which I'm talking about here, range bound trades based on probabilities, decay, good risk management for weekly and monthly income, and then your speculative. So anything you guys do, any trade Rob or I would do or think of is going to fall into one of these three buckets. And that's kind of how I run an options portfolio. And I allocate based on uh, price levels of the market, volatilities, that type of thing. So with that overall perspective, we're going to focus on range bound trades, at least a couple of them. Some of the range bound trades would be calendar, iron condor, butterflies, um, um, double diagonals, those type of trades. Credit spreads would more, you say, where would credit spreads fit in? Or vertical, vertical credit spreads would fit in more, a little bit more directional, right? I mean, because, you know, if you, if you put it on the call side, you're a tinge more bearish. If you put it on the put side, you're a little more bullish. Um, and so that's where they would fall in. So we're going to talk about calendars and iron condors, two trades that are based, I'm doing them because of the probabilities. I'm doing them because of the positive theta that uh, comes my way and it's more range bound. So, and these might, I guess you'd consider them under the philosophy of like an insurance company in terms of that uh, monthly income and type of thing. So those are the two strategies that we're gonna focus on today, range bound. And Rob, um, Rob's thinking, I didn't know he'd talk so much on that slide with only five words on there, but I gave a little bit of perspective. So let's move to the next slide. And again, if you have any questions about anything as it's coming in, just type it in and I will make up an answer for you. Just joking, give you something. Um, so here's an example of a calendar in SPX today. And this is kind of where SPX finished. Uh, one of the reasons I, I look at SPX, SPX is a nice, well-diversified index of 500 stocks. It has great option liquidity, meaning it trades a lot of option volume. Very nice. So first, let me, let me talk about the mechanics of a calendar, how it makes money, and give you a little more details on it, how I trade it. So first of all, what is a calendar? Uh, calendar mechanics are pretty simple. I'm buying a further out duration, selling a closer in duration, uh, and I'm usually doing it at the same strike. Uh, you could do them neutral, bullish, bearish, but I'm starting at more neutral. So in this example, the mechanics, I'm buying one in the right corner there. Thank you, Rob. Buy one May 17, uh, 2900 call, and then I'm going to sell against it, one May 3rd expiration, 2,900 calls. So my short option, if I put it on today, uh, May 3rd would be 16 days from till, not, till expiration. And my long option, May 17, would be approximately 30 days till expiration. Uh, the cost of that calendar would be $8.50, subtracting the cost uh, from the long option uh, in the short option. And then the margin, or your risk in a calendar would be your debit. That's the most you could lose, would be $850. So that's the mechanics, buying a further out expiration, selling a closer in expiration, usually at the same strike if I'm directional, I mean, if I'm neutral. If I was more directional with SPX at 2,900, I could do the same expirations and place the calendar at the 2920 strike if I was more bullish. If I was more bearish, 
I can maybe use the puts, same strikes, same expiration, and do it at maybe a lower strike price, uh, the 2880 uh, strike price. So I've talked about mechanics. Now let's talk about just for a second, how do these suckers make money? Why would you do it? And first of all, if you look at the graph, uh, just you know, along the left axis, you can see the P&L, right? You can see different amounts of money you can make on the left axis all the way to the left uh, in terms of the monies you can make. But like what Rob is highlighting there, the green line is the expiration graph. That's how this trade looks in expiration of the short option, which would be May 3rd in 16 days. So in 16 days, if we close at 2,900, which is in red, um, which is where we're at now, if we didn't move and we close at 2,900, if you take your eyeballs and you look along the left axis, you can see, wow, we're putting up 800 bucks, I can make over $1,000, somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500. How the heck can that happen? That if we did close at the short strike, I could double my money. Well, again, not that I'm looking to do that because I think it's very difficult to try to hit a bullseye and think that in uh, 16 days, which would be from now till May 17 expiration, SPX is going to close right where it's at today. I mean, that's, that's a stinking lotto shot, right? A lotto pick. Um, so how does this, how could that happen though? At least so you understand how that green graph looks like it makes a lot of money if we don't move. And the answer is at expiration on May 3rd, whatever I sold the, the 2900s for today, that's going to zero. So, you know, just throwing some numbers in for sake of discussion. If the May 3rd, 2900, and I'm totally making this up, was $10, and the May 17, 2900 that I bought was 18 uh, was $22. So if my short 2900 was $10 and my long 2900 was $22, that would give me a debit of uh, about $12, which would be close to the debit. Oh no, no, let me let me say that. Take that back. If my 2900 was $10. Uh, the May 3rd expiration was $10, and the May 17, 2900 was about $18. That'd be an $8 debit, right? I'm just trying to put some numbers so it'll get in your bloodstream a little better. So let's pretend here the May 17, 2900 is about 18 bucks, and let's pretend that the May 3rd, 2900 is 10 bucks, so $8 difference. The way you make you could make buku bucks, right? Which I won't advocate, but I just want to explain it to you, is if at May 3rd expiration in 16 days, if, if we close at 2900s, what you sold the 2900s for, $10, that sucker is going to zero. So you made $10. Now, that's good. The, the May 17, 2900s, at May 3rd, the expiration of the shorts, we paid $18. Those aren't going to zero. Why? because you'll still have two weeks left on the May 17s when we get to May 3rd. So, you know, you sold the shorts for $10. Those are going to zero. The longs that you bought for 18 might go to uh, $11 or something, right? So if the longs go to $11, I'm just making these numbers up. If the longs go from $18 to 11 and the shorts go from 10 to zero, the spread that I paid about $8 for goes to 11, right? It goes to 11, right? And that spread expands, goes from 850 to 11 or 1150, and that's how I make money from the short decaying a lot more than the longs will. So it's based on decay, right? So we talked about mechanics. We talked a little bit about how the sucker makes money. And now we'll talk a little bit about risk management, how I view this thing, and how I get probabilities in my favor on this. So first of all, when we put this trade on, if Rob and I put this trade on, and we'll look at an example of this, uh, almost this example. Um, matter of fact, it'll be almost exactly this example. 
uh, it will be this example because um, it's still relevant. We closed at 2,900. So if we put this on, the way to look at this is if you look at the green lines, and maybe Rob could show with the highlighter where the green line kind of crosses zero at expiration, those, those vertical lines there, which Rob is showing you, those two vertical lines that Rob showed you, which are approximately 30 to 35 points up and down from the short strike, that's your profitable area for the calendar. So between, in the green little area there, between the two expiration break-evens, in that area, which is basically between 2870 and about 2937 on the upside, you make money. Beyond those points, above 2937 and below 2870, uh, it's the old expression, Houston, we got a problem. Remember that one? Houston, we got a problem. So the way I manage this trade, generally what I like to do to get the probability, I'm just giving you some, some, just a couple, two cents on this thing. Um, I like to manage it, you know, as long as it's, you know, the basics is, as long as it's between those expiration break even, it's percolating like a good cup of Folgers coffee. As it moves beyond the break evens, you're going to start losing money and you're gonna to have to either take it off or adjust. So between that area, this spread is going to percolate and that 850 debit will start growing as your short options will decay more than your long options will. Um, and so that's basically it. I mean, so, so really what you're doing is saying, hey, I mean, in its simplistic form on a calendar, if I pay 850 for this thing, and as long as we don't go beyond the expiration break-evens, uh, I'm going to put an order in to try to make, you know, whatever, 10% or, what, you know, let's just throw out 10% here. 10% of what? Someone may say 10% of what? The capital, right? 850 debit. You know what? I think there's a typo here, and I apologize. I just noticed this. Rob, uh, Rob probably spotted it, but uh, there's a typo there, and I apologize. It says 850 debit. The margin should be 850. I apologize. Uh, your risk in a calendar is what you pay for it. So that that margin should not be 800. And I apologize. It should be 850. So your margin will be the same as your debit. So um, so if my debit is 850 dollars and I'm looking to pay to make eight or 10 percent. That's about $85 for every one contract. And so if I paid $850, I'd be looking to sell it out at probably around $9.35 credit. That would be a profit of $85 divided by my margin of $850. Does that make sense? And so really what you're what you're doing here is you have to act as we get near and past these expiration break-evens, I have to get out. Now, someone may say, hey, Dan, you know, 30 points either way or 35 points um, either way doesn't seem like a lot in the market. Well, it depends on your horizon, right? My goal on, a, on this 16-day calendar is to get out in three, four days, three, four trading days. So three, four trading days, uh, that room isn't you know, th th that's not bad. Really, realistically, probably three days. Um, and again, remember, we're in a very low VIX environment. The VIX is under 13. So, uh, you know, 20 points is a lot different uh, in a VIX 12 environment than it is VIXs in an 18 environment. <laughs> and um, so if you look along the left-hand side, uh, real quick, we'll talk about the Greeks. The Greeks. You can see the deltas are 0.95. So when you do this trade at the money, your deltas will be close to neutral, you know, up or down uh, one delta. And, and delta just means think of stock equivalent. If I was long 10 deltas, think in terms of for a short move in the underlying 10 shares of stock. If I'm long 10 shares of IBM and it goes up a dollar, I make 10 bucks. If I'm long 10, uh, shares of IBM, we go down a dollar, I lose $10.
Uh, let's skip gamma for now. Gamma is just talking about how your deltas change as the price moves. And basically, um, you know, there's an expression, you can't have your cake and eat it too. So if you've got negative gamma, you usually get positive theta. Negative gamma means as your deltas go down, you get long delta. As your price of SPX goes down, you get long deltas. As the price of SPX go, you get short deltas. Well, to be a little clearer, it's like saying, on the, on the way down, I'm going to get long stock as we're going down. And on the way up, I'm going to get short stock as we're going up. That wouldn't be good, right? You wouldn't want to be short stock as the stock is going up. And you wouldn't want to be like long IBM as IBM's going down. So gamma goes against you on these income trades, but you're getting positive theta. So that theta is a theoretical number of 22 just means that today, if you take the decay theoretically of the May 3rd, 2900 versus the May 17, 2900, theoretically, we'd get a check for $22. And that number increases each day over the next 16 days as we get towards the May 17 expiration because decay increases exponentially as we get near expiration. And then Vega, the last Greek, and again, we're going fast here for time, folks. Um, and again, this will be recorded. You could look at it, but I just want to at least give you something to think about. Vega, one of the two risks of a calendar, price risk and then volatility, Vega is another theoretical number. And all it means is if the volatility in Vega measures the time premium or extrinsic value of an option. So uh, Vega of 86 simply means the if the option volatility called implied volatility of the May 17, 2900 goes up a point, and the May 3rd, 2900 call, if that volatility goes up a point, and they don't usually go lock and sync together, um, but if they each go up a point, you'll make $86 theoretically. Why? Because you're buying the option with more extrinsic value, you're selling the one with less. So if the uh, option volatilities or the VIX increases, this is saying you probably should make some money because the one you're buying with more extrinsic value, that'll become even more. And the one you're selling, because you sold less extrinsic value, you won't lose as much as the one you made. Conversely, if the volatility goes down, which usually happens when the price goes up, um, you'll lose 86. How is that? Again, because we're buying the one with more extrinsic value and selling the one with less, as the volatilities go down, as VIX decreases, as the market, generally that happens when the market goes up, you'll lose $86 theoretically for each one contract because you're caught holding the bag. You're buying the one with more extrinsic value and you're selling the one with less. So that's a quick uh, knock you down calendar explanation. Hopefully at least you have the overall game plan uh, of this. Uh, Rob, why don't you, for time, for, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, we'll go through that and then we'll look at a few examples with Rob. Here's an iron condor in SPX another range bound trade, simply combining, uh, you know, if you haven't seen the first webinar that I did with, with uh, Rob and the group um, last time, we talked about credit spreads. And this is just expanding on that, where we put a credit spread on the upside, credit spread on the downside, and it gives us a nice range of where we uh, can make some money. So in this example, uh, again, this is a 16-day iron condor, just this example, not that a 16-day is better than a 45-day, better or worse, or any other duration, but I'm using that as an example. And so uh, using the April 17 expiration, which is uh, 16 days, uh, excuse me, April 17 is today. I'm using the May 3rd expiration, which is 16 days out in this example. And so I'm selling a 2980 call and I'm buying a 2990 call. And in this example, uh, my long strike is gonna be 10 points away from the short, and the long is really just a hedge. The short, the way I picked the short strike, uh, 2980, I basically used a delta of around 10. So I'm putting it out of the money, a delta of 10 just means that there's only a 10% probability that we're gonna go beyond that short strike. Um, uh, by May 3rd expiration. So it's, 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 it's pretty far out there. And again, this is, we're selling the May 3rd, 2980. So May 3rd is, uh, 
May 3rd is 17 days away, and I've selling the 2980 calls, almost 80 points over the price here of 2900. So I'm selling 80 points out of the money, and there's uh, 16 days to go. So that's how I do the call credit spread. Then I go on the puts, and I'm selling a little bit higher delta on the puts because there's a volatility skew in the indexes, specifically RUT and SPX that prices the out of the money puts more than the call. So um, to get this a little more equidistant and a little more neutral, uh, you're going to sell a put instead of a 10 delta, uh, approximately, uh, closer to a 16 delta. And that's why I chose the 2820 put. Uh, so I'm selling one of those and then buying my hedge at the 2810 put. So you can see there, my short calls are 2980 with us at around 2900, 2901. You can see that in red. My calls are 80 points out of the money and my puts at the 2820 strike are about 80 points out of the money. So this would be more of an equidistant iron condor. Um, and uh, I would be doing this for a credit of $1.60. Uh, margin or risk of 840. And so if you look at this, the way you get the risk is the difference in the strikes on the call credit spread or the difference in the strikes and the put credit spreads is 10. So I have $1,000 of risk minus the credit of $160. So my risk, if SPX went to zero or a billion, would be $840. Now that $160 credit, and we're in a very low volatility environment. So this isn't ideal for iron condors, but um, but so the yields wouldn't be as great as if the volatility were higher. But if we took $160 divided by $840, uh, so my that green line at expiration, maybe Rob could show that, uh, the green line from 2980 to 2820 uh, on top there, that's about a 19% yield. Uh, the $160 credit divided by my margin of 840. The purple line there is more the, how this graph looks today. And that purple line basically will morph into the green line over the next 16 days, right? And um, what else? Again, this is a positive. If you look at the Greeks on the left, I'll just, the deltas are minus 0.45, close to zero. Um, and so that, I, I wanted to set this up a little more equidistant, close to zero. Uh, the theta is about $9. And again, it's just saying that the options I'm selling, I'm selling in this example more extrinsic value than I'm buying. So I'm going to get some positive theta similar to the calendar. But uh, unlike the calendar, this is short vega. So if the volatility goes down, I'll make some money. If the volatility goes up, I'll lose some money because. Um, uh, I'm selling the options uh, that have more time premium um, in this one, whereas in the calendar, I'm buying the options that have more time premium. And so, again, pretty similar here. I make money between the short strikes, 2820 and 2980. Uh, my margin is 840. Uh, generally, whether it be the calendar or the iron condor, the way I trade them, just giving you, and I'll be talking more of the calendar in the master's class that'll be starting Tuesday, but generally I will stay in these trades as a general guideline. If this is a 16 day trade, maybe about 25% of the duration. So I'm going to be in this, if this is a 16 day trade, maybe four days. So I'm looking to get maybe seven to 8% on my margin. Uh, so if my margin is $840, I'm looking to make 7 or 8% of that, uh, 7 or 8% of 840 might be about $65. So if I sold it for $1.60 credit, I'd buy it back for about 95 cent debit. And that would give me a profit of $65 divided by the margin of 840, about a 7, almost 8% return. So again, for some of you, if you've never done this, um, you know, it's going to be, you're going to have to maybe watch this a couple times and put a few trades on small to get used to it. But it's not that difficult. But, you know, again, as I always use the analogy, Rob, if somebody, you know, the day before our kids, I have four kids, and the day before my kids learned to ride a bike, 
even though I told them, so, and I didn't do this, son, 42 billion people are riding bikes. Uh, you're going to be able to do this. I don't think that would have reassured him, right? He said, I'll be the first one out of 42 billion that won't do it. But the day before you learn to ride a bike, it's hard. The day after you go, that was easy. Well, if you never do an iron condor on paper or, or a small live one at some point and do it, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be difficult, right? If you never cook fettuccine Alfredo, uh, making it will seem very difficult, right? So you're going to have to roll up your sleeves and, and, and do one or two. So anyways, that's a little overview of folks of how I look at the world and, and, and some of these range bound trades. And I think maybe now we'll uh, take a look with Rob and look at a few examples and get you a little comfortable with the wonderful brokerage uh, platform with Lime uh, Brokerage. So Rob, come on in. Oh, you know what, Rob, I forgot. Let me go real quick. Yep, <laughs> I forgot about one this last slide, time. right? <laughs> Is this one, okay, so philosophy and plan for range bound trades vehicle. I like SPX. And RUT, to be honest with you, they're well-diversified index indexes. They have great tax uh, benefits, very good liquidity. You're doing less commissions than if you did the smaller products, which are no problem. SPY and IWM are great smaller products of SPX and RUT. But, you know, I've been trading SPX and RUT for, you know, 20, 25 years. And I think they're great uh, vehicles. Also, I'll use some liquid stocks that are over $100, $150 that you can use, Apple and some of those. Consistency of strategy. This is kind of our philosophy over here at Shared and Mentoring. Consistency of strategy. When I do these trades, I don't cherry pick them and say, I'm going to do them only when the volatility is high. I'm only going to do them on Rob's birthday. I'm only going to do them... No, no, I do them every stinking week. As long as basically I'm looking at some parameters, as long as VIX is under weather conditions, VIX is between 12 and 7, 12 and 18, I'm doing these range bound strategies until I'm 97 and a half. At 97 and a half years old, I stop, right? Because then the dementia should be getting in. But so, so I have a level of where I'm playing this uh, between VIX 12 and 17 and a half, because that's a good weather condition. If VIX is too low, especially for some of these strategies, that might be a little difficult. If VIX is over seven, let's say VIX goes to 23, 24, that means the market is getting pounded and I may want to back off some of these strategies. Um, was there any more on that slide, Rob? Or, oh, I see, you got the criteria. I see I was going back and forth. Thank you. And uh, I also look at something called ATR, average true range, which gives you the the distance between the high and the low on a given basis. And when kind of when you look at a price chart and you look at those candles, when the range is the, the daily ranges start getting big, I back off some of these range bound trades a little bit. In other words, I have ATR levels that are acceptable to play these range bound trades. I have VIX levels that are acceptable to play the range bound trades. And uh, price levels, I don't want to see things moving too fast. But anyways, I mentioned the VIX between 12 and 18 is something we look at, and it will save you from trading when there's a correction. Because if you look at when we had the correction starting, it started in early October. And on October 10th, maybe the first day into this, the down move before we'd really gone down, VIX crossed over 17, 18, and then things really cut loose and the market went down 20%. Most of that you would have been out of. So I think having an, you know, having a, 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 a range of where you would trade is important. You know, if you came from California to Chicago where I live with your convertible with ball tires and no heat, I'd say, look it. You ain't driving that in December through April, because if you do, you'll either freeze to death or you'll, you'll slide right off the road with the snow and the ice. So anyways, I think that's, Rob, go back one slide real. I think there's maybe a point I missed on, uh, on this thing. Okay, so our philosophy is same vehicle. So SPX or RUT, and we trade some other vehicles, but those are the main ones. 
consistency of strategy every week, every week. So this trade I'm talking about today was a 16-day trade. In our master's class, we're going to be focusing on nine-day trades that you would put on just about every uh, nine or 10-day trades you put on every Tuesday or Wednesday, every Tuesday or Wednesday. And that's so I think that's important. And then the, the, here's the beautiful part, folks. For those of you who don't understand options that well, the most important thing in being a consistent option trader is one thing, and it has nothing to do with options. It's, it's keeping your losers not far from your winners. When we do these range-bound trades, you're going to win probably three-quarters of the time, maybe more. It's just those the quarter of the time you lose, you just have to have a sane plan. And, and, and the plan is keep your losers near your winners. And, and really, that's – I mean, I've been doing that for years, and that's important. And then the edge with these range-bound trades is the probabilities in decay, right? That's the edge. You know, you have to have an edge for trading, and that's where it is. And so that's kind of our philosophy of trading. And we had one question from Len. Len said, should the ATR and the implied volatility be trending down with ATR below? Let's see what the rest of uh, Len's uh, with the ATR below the IV. So Len says, should the average true range and the implied volatility be trending down with the average true range below the implied volatility. I don't really care if the average true range is below the implied volatility. I just like, you know, if I'm looking at a vehicle, I like in the SPX the average true range to be uh, at least under 30, um, and I need the VIX kind of between 12 and 18. So there's some areas that are more conducive to these range-bound trades. So. Rob, jump in here and maybe let's let's take a look at the platform and look at a few examples of these trades. And Rob's going to start out with a a, a, a quick overview of uh, of the tool. And and I always get excited looking at the front page when Rob does that. It just is very user friendly, and there's uh, it's just a lot of neat things you can put all on one screen. So Rob, why don't you kind of do a, an overview with them? Rob, can we? Can you hear me? Sorry about that. I was on mute. <laughs> I have the. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Dan. Um, I have the the Lightspeed Trader platform uh, in focus here. You can see I have a couple different windows open. I'll, I'll go through some of the windows and some of the brief settings and functions, and then we'll go back to Dan and we'll we'll build a couple of the spreads that we're looking at. So. Any of the windows can be accessed through the new menu. You can see we have the option level two, the option chain, the time and sales, and we have the complex options order entry. Uh, I have the option chain right here in the middle. You can change the, the expiration date. You can view all dates, a certain near date, near month, or a specific series. You can view uh, the strike price and whether if you want it to be near or out of the money, and you can view a specific range, or you can have all your ones displayed here. And if I click on a specific symbol, it will update very quick. You can see the in the money, out of the money. There's a shaded area to show which calls are in the money and which are, are out. Uh, I have my option level two here on the bottom for my single order entry. So if I click on a contract you can see it populates here the the 289 call I have my bid and offer I can click on a price you can see very easily it populates my order entry and I simply click the buy or sell to place that order if I want to build a, a complex strategy I have my complex order entry we call it the COE and you can see I have the ability to place multiple legs at one time so if I simply click on double click on a specific contract, it's going to populate in my COE, along with I have the ability to click on the bidder ask to choose whether I want it to be a buy or sell order. So I can do that very easily and build a spread uh, very quickly. And then if I expand this, you can see it also gives me a, a, the, the price and profit graph here so you can see where the strategy would turn from profitable to non-profitable based on the 
the underlying price and you can see what your max loss or max profit would be as well on this graph. So it's a it's a great tool here. You can see we allow up to four spread, uh, four legs, so you can build a butterfly or uh, a condor on here. Um, you can easily flip between the two strategies. So if I did one here and I say I want to flip that, I could easily go from a debit to a credit. So this one is the debit, then I could switch that to the credit. You can see on the top, you can pay, you see what you're paying or receiving on the total here as well. So you can see the debit or credit amount. If I wanted to hit go, it's going to give me the details here, selling one SPY and then buying one SPY, also giving me the, the difference and also my buying power requirements. So the software is going to assist you with, with the margin and the buying power on here as well. A couple other features, just very quick. You can see we added a couple of additional tools. We have a now have the options most active window. This will provide with your most active options on the day. You can see which SPY or SPX contracts or VIX contracts or any of the contracts which meet certain volume thresholds and traded the, the highest volume on the day, most unusual volume. That's comparing the volume of this particular series versus their standard average volume along with some imbalance and most active underliers. So you can see the SPY, SPX, of course, is usually uh, on top. So I can easily click on that SPX, populate, and then you can easily build the strategies. We also have a, uh, an option blockchain as well. And you can see I, I took one position earlier, a butterfly in SPY. You can even build your strategy and save it. So I have a butterfly one in my complex form and that immediately should, uh, there we go, uh, build, it populates with your save strategy in there so I can easily either add to it or reduce and close out very easily. So you can see we have our price graph as well and the ability to save the strategy and, and close out as best as possible. Or I could even right click on a position to close out, close out all, and or enter that back into the COE, the complex form. And then we also have the ability to group by underlier. So we have, uh, if we have a different series or different underlier, it would group separately. So you can see a PL based on that one symbol rather than your overall PL. So there's a lot of useful tools here. So um, if you guys are interested, you can always request a demo here of the software as well. But uh, Dan, I'll let you uh, instruct me to uh, which contracts you're looking to build here, oh. and we can, oh, yeah. we can show some of the uh, how the risk graph will show the the profit and loss, and 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 how to uh, implement that on the software. So I said, uh, should we yeah, look perfect. At SPX. Yeah, if we could look, yeah, look at SPX, and we'll start with a calendar trade. And uh, you know, folks, what I like about this, you got everything on one screen, and I just think it's it's so neat. Um, you don't have to go to different screens and I think as Rob was showing some of those screens you can move them around right or you can every window is adjustable you're able to modify change the colors change uh, anything could be That's awesome monitors you can move over so it's very easily uh, customizable you can change the background you can change the fonts to make it larger if you need a little bit more help viewing everything and there's a lot of different settings to go off of the bid, the ask, the midpoint. You can have it auto update to, to peg the bid or ask as well, or the last trade. You can have your default set up. So there's a lot of different settings you can do as well. So uh, it's very easy, um, customizable to, to your own. So you could default your, your buy or sell price. You could default your routing, your order type, your, your quantity can all be defaulted as well. Yeah, yeah, that is neat. Um, those are neat features. Well, let's take a look at uh, a calendar, an SPX, uh, and what I'm looking at, uh, Rob, I'm gonna buy the May 17 expiration and sell the May 3rd uh, in the calls in SPX. So I'll be looking to buy the May 17, uh, probably at the money 2900 call, and then sell that May 3rd expiration uh, calendar in the calls at the 2900 so our shorts will be 16 days from expiration and our longs will be 30 days 
um, and okay, we'll take so a look at that. In, and right, same one in your example here. The so we're yeah, we're yeah, buying. same thing because that's where SPX. Yeah, Got the 16-day so calendar, calendar, the expert. And then yeah, we'll buying the May 17th, 2900s. Yeah, yeah, same thing. It's just I think the debit's a little bit different because it's a little later in the day. Um, and we'll see what that is, and then folks can you can kind of explain the the sure. numbers a little bit. Okay, so we uh, have it here. So we're buying the the SPX 2900 call, and then we're selling the the May 3rd 2900 call. And you right. can choose what price you're looking to go at. You can use the midpoint or the bid or the ask. I'm buying the ask and selling the bid here. And you can see. Why well, would go like if you could do if you could do it like near, you know, in SPX generally, you can get filled near the mid. If we just put sure. it like, let's go mid prices, which should be what about. Uh, so we go mid. We have the mid column that you can easily click and adjust. So yeah. Mid at 3280 and 24. And this is going off of kind of the end of the day. So you can see. Um, you have your debit amount here on the the top right, 880, and the difference between the yeah. what you're purchasing at 3280 and what you're selling at 24. So you're set, you're viewing that 880. Okay. Uh, and I can then, make uh, this a little bigger so we can see the risk graph yeah, here. Yeah, perfect. kind of not showing that full range on this one. Let's see the, so I don't see the graph yet. Is it show? It's, yeah, it's it's not really coming through that clear on, on this strategy. Uh, I think maybe the SPX is a little too far on this one. I'm um, not sure why. Oh, is it? We could use an. Would it be better like using a stock or something? Or we can try the SPY. Yeah, whatever. Any vehicle really would. Let's try SPY. Very similar. We could do the same expirations. It would just be the 290, right? Um, Buy the May 17, sell the May 3rd, and just do it at the at the money, the 29 or 290 strike, I guess. Looks like mid price, and this is you know, folks, using Spy is great for. Is your learning or any time? I mean, Spy is a very liquid vehicle, but it's going to be ten times uh, less expensive than the SPX. But you'll pay more commissions. But um, you know, here you can do a calendar. This calendar uh, is going to be like a dollar uh, twelve or something versus an SPX. We we're paying eight dollars or something like that, eight nine dollars. All right, we'll get a. So we could try the other example as well, but you can see if you do okay. hit the go button, you'll get the difference here, the what you're paying, and then the the buying power requirement. Well, that's great. And how did you get the graph there? Or you it. I guess with that strategy, it doesn't really come through that well, unfortunately. Okay. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Um, it's easy to put in, though. I saw. Yeah, building the strategy itself is is very easy. Uh, so if we go to the the May third uh, on the Iron Condor, you're buying the twenty nine ninety. Yeah, May third, you're buying the twenty nine. Uh, Oh, I think on the on the yeah, you're buying the twenty yeah twenty nine ninety or, um, I think in this example I was actually doing the twenty nine eight buying the twenty nine eighty selling the twenty nine seventies. I might have tweaked it a little bit when I looked, um, but either one would be fine. Um, 
if you could buy on the May 3rd expiration, so that's 16 days out, buy in the 2980s, sell in the 2970s, and then on the puts, selling the 2820s and buy in the 2810s. And Liesl, as, as Rob is building that, Liesl said, what types of spreads are you allowed to trade with? And Rob, would the, would the answer best be, I mean, when people come in and open an account with you guys, um, you, you kind of look at their experience and stuff to see what, what they may be uh, eligible to yeah, trade. So would that be the best way be to answer that? Based, sure. You, you'd be based on in certainly the couple different factors, whether if it's experience or your financials or investment objectives. So it's taking into account a lot of different factors to, depending on which approval levels. You know, if you've never traded before, you probably would be limited to some standard spreads and then you can do some advanced spreads or short spreads as you either gained experience or if your financials and objectives were suitable for that approval level. Okay. Um, and, and usually, you know, people come in first, you, you want to maybe start with, you know, uh, the, the, the first uh, approving is, you know, maybe buy calls, buy puts, do some vertical spreads, which are just buying an option and selling one against it either a strike higher or lower and then you know, as you get a little more experience uh calendars which are horizontal trades and then but some of the other ones we've talked about uh, butterflies iron condors a little more complex but but when you look at it an iron condor is simply adding a couple verticals together so um but uh anyways so how's it how's it coming with that iron condor Oh, good. Looks like it's looks like it's getting built there. Is that the uh, what strike are you selling and buy? So you're selling the uh, twenty eight. So buying a twenty nine. Or is that wrong? Twenty nine. That should be twenty eight eighty. Uh, yeah. Buying the twenty nine eighty, selling the twenty nine seventy. Perfect. That's your that's your iron condor look. Perfect. Yeah, it so looks you can good. See break even here, right above twenty eight ten, and then you can go up to your max profit would be the the dollar the hundred sixty. Yeah. And up until the range would be the twenty nine seventy here, and then anything that goes beyond that would then start to be a losing transaction to your max loss of the the eight forty. Yeah, and folks, you could see there, you know, just like I think if you're swimming in the, the ocean, you know, that green area is between the buoys, right? The green area on top there that Rob, and I, I think it's great that the software is colored like that. Uh, during, between the short strikes at expiration, that's all green. And, uh, and you can see when you that's go, the same yeah. model as your condor spread there as well so oh you yeah can see it. it's it's yeah it's matching up with the yeah that's perfect and then it shows the red area you know you don't want the price to move uh beyond those short strikes because you can see that's where the pnl uh will start going against you but what's nice is with these range bound trades uh you can see right you know you, you set up an you know on all these trades we set up an intentional plan that you know, you can adjust or take these off uh, when things get uh, bad. And it's almost like when you're a kid swimming in the lake or in the ocean and the lifeguard says, don't go beyond the buoy, right? Things can happen. And and that's what it is here. Don't go beyond the short strikes. Um, uh, th that can get uh, problematic and uh, uh, on these types of trades. So that's what's nice it's with these graphs. It gives you a lot of, it, I like that you can change the different colors like Rob is doing because then it's just visually, you know, green you like, red you don't like. I mean, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, obviously you have to get, uh, learn a little more about the craft of trading 
two vertical credit spreads, but I think that's a, uh, uh, and you can see here, the underlying Rob's got in blue, 2,900 in the middle. Now it's yellow in the middle. And then the short strikes, like 2,970 on the upside, 2,810 on the downside. So you kind of have an idea where you do best on this strategy over the next six, uh, six, 17 day, 16 days through the May 3rd expiration. So, um, yeah, looks good. I appreciate it, Rob. And uh, anything else you want to mention on this Iron Condor, Rob, or things that, that be helpful for them with the software? Well, I think it's really, as you said, starting with some of your standard contracts and then building the spreads and then building some of these more advanced strategies as you go. And, and that's why we provide these demos is to give people a chance to test out the software, enter some of these orders and positions so you can really track them. So you can see I did have this one execute. It's now showing in my positions window and it's it's breaking it down into each individual leg and then I getting an overall P&L for that SPX underlier. So you can see long, yeah. short, short, long, each has their own P&L and uh, it's a easy way to, to track that position. Yeah, very beneficial. And um, so, well, good. Rob, and then, like I said, anything... you can save, you can save these. Yeah. So if I wanted to go to my original butterfly position, it will populate very easily. But if then I want to, let's hmm. say, close out my condor instead, I can populate it very easily because I saved that spread. So I don't have to re-populate oh, each individual leg here. I've already saved my strategy so I can easily bring it back up. So you can kind of toggle back and forth. Sure. That's nice. Yeah, if you have multiple uh, positions on, even multiple positions in the same underline, mm -hmm. um, you can see there. So yeah, that is that is nice. Um, and I see, um, yeah, and, and, and you can also get on this page, even if you have the iron, your, your trade on, you can have like a price chart in another window, right? If you want to, if you're, if you're maybe a technical analyst and you want to follow the price pattern. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yep. So the, the chart would be available here. So you can have multiple time frames. Oh, yeah. The, the daily, the minute and scroll different time yeah. frames and apply other studies or conditions onto your chart as well. So you certainly are able to open up many different windows to assist. On the same page, yeah. So that is very nice, folks. And I appreciate Rob uh, showing the platform. And uh, Rob, anything else? I think I'm through. And, you know, if anybody has any questions. Oh, somebody said, do you still offer Live Vol X and Sterling Trading? Uh, Sterling Trading bought that. We do. So you can see the list of trading platforms we do offer, Lightspeed Trader, uh, the mobile web trader, the Live All Options, Sterling, and Realtek. So, and we have even additional specialized. So you can view or request a demo for the LVX, the Live All, or the specialized software, and some really strong option platforms as well, Silex or Wex. So we have a full range of different platforms to meet the, the requirements you're looking for as well. And you can oh, always wonderful. contact us here to request a demo or even to have a personal walkthrough of, of any of the platforms as well. All right. Well, any other questions, folks? Uh, thanks for coming today. Again, if you'd like to uh, join us in the master's class, that'll be Tuesday. Uh, Rob, anything else you want to add on anything? Um, I, I think that was that was pretty great. I think everyone should have gotten some really good uh, knowledge out of there. So we definitely appreciate it. I could I could bring up your slide here with your contact info one more time here, just to uh, here we go. Yeah, if anybody uh, has any questions, you could email me Dan at SheridanMentoring dot com or uh, get hold of Rob and either of us would I'd so, be happy to help you in any way we can. And yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, for putting up the, um, take advantage of the promo code LIME and uh, certainly uh, reach out to us with any questions for Dan. We're happy to pass them on. And anything that anyone wants to, to speak with Lightspeed about, we'd be happy to discuss as well.
So Dan, right. we thank you. We thank you very much. We hope to have you back soon with Thanks, a, another topic. And uh, everyone, this will be recorded, as Dan said, so it'll be available. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll hear from you guys, and, and we'll hear from Dan again too. So Dan, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. Thank you. Great. Take care. Right. Bye bye. Bye.